everybody, it's Pastor Caleb. Hope you're doing well. Got a quick video on some things that I've seen over the past few days from some Christian music artists and some Christian celebrities, you know, attending the uh, double awards in a dress and then having some videos on that. So I want to kind of look through uh, the scriptures on that. So make sure you stick around, hit subscribe, hit the bell notifications for more info on the channel. So over the last few years, we've seen this trend in Christianity of deconstructing uh, one's faith, kind of going uh, a liberal theology, just disregarding scripture at all. We've seen people that have professed to be followers of Jesus just flat out turn their back on God and deconstruct. And we've seen that with Rhett and Link. We've seen that uh, they do that Good Mythical Morning. I actually went to college with them, grew up in the same area as them. We got Joshua Harris who wrote, you know, uh, I Kissed Dating Goodbye. Basically, has left his wife, turned his back on, on Christianity. And recently, I saw a post from Derek Webb where he is he's just straight off the rocker uh, where he showed up to the Duff Awards in a dress and then he had... A little video clip that he responded to with that. Why did I wear a dress to the Devil Wards? As a cis, straight, white man, I walk into a room like that and any room with an incredible amount of advantage and privilege. If I'm attending as an ally of friends and colleagues, I should do everything possible to surrender that privilege at the door. If the way you look at my loved ones isn't the way you look at me, I'm not truly standing with them. It's like Stan Mitchell says, if you claim to be someone's ally but aren't getting hit by the stones thrown at them, you aren't standing close enough. Plus, I have amazing legs. Uh, you know, just there's a lot going on here and it almost seems like that these people are raping Christianity. And what I mean by that is that they are taking advantage of Christians who who like their music, who have liked their books, who like their comedy. Uh, for instance, Rhett and Link went to college with them. They had a following with Campus Crusade for Christ. And when they were tr trying to get started and making their videos, they had everybody in Campus Crusade, Campus Crusade come to their events to, to like their videos, to give them a, a thumbs up on YouTube and used that ministry to gain a reputation and then it's like all right now we've we've got our hollywood elite status now so we're going to deconstruct we're going to throw away all of that and then you know with like this Derek webb guy i mean cayman's call man that was a, a a band that i listened to growing up in high school i mean phenomenal great music i mean very talented and I feel like they've used the church, they've raped the church and taking advantage of making money off their music ability, which I'm not against people using their talents to make a living, but when you profess Christ, that he loved us, that he died for us, that he's coming back, basically a gospel presentation, and then all of a sudden it's like, nope, going with the way the culture is gonna go and I'm gonna deconstruct everything that I've basically preached and said from the stage for the past 15, 20 years. You know, in Psalm 1 it talks about the way the righteous and the way of the wicked and the wicked will be blown around like the chaff in the wind. And I feel like that's what we see a lot in these Christian celebrities that they are blown around like chaff in the wind and they land on whatever the culture is saying is what needs to happen. And I think we see that with Derek Webb showing up to the Dove Awards with a transgender individual and wearing a dress in support of that. So basically showing up in drag to a awards ceremony that is to honor those that have faithfully served in the music industry to proclaim the name of Jesus. It breaks my heart to just see 
this happening. And I kind of want to just walk through just a little bit of scripture to kind of help us understand a biblical view on on this. So if we are people of the Bible, people of the book that believe the Holy Scriptures to be in air, in foul, the very breath of God, we know that Scripture is not broken. We see that in John chapter 10, verse 35. And I'm going to read John chapter 10, verse 35. It'll be on, on the screen. If he called them little g-gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be broken. We know scripture, it can be broken. If we have professed Jesus as Lord and Savior, we know that the Word of God, this book, these holy scriptures, they are perfect, they are infallible, they are inherent, and there is no mistake in these in these words. And I think what it ultimately comes back to is that we need to have a biblical understanding of manhood and womanhood from the very beginning. We see that in Genesis chapter 1. From the very beginning, we are, we, man, humankind is designed in the image of God. We are created in the image of God. Male and female, he created them. So there are two, only two gender categories that are in the Bible, male and female. We are born male. We are born female. And when we say that scripture is not broken, that means that God does not make mistakes. God creates the way God intended. He has a design. He has this telos. He has this end game. He creates with the end game in mind. And God, from the very beginning, as he's creating, he says, this is good. This is good. This is good. God is the one who determines what is good, not us. We do not have that authority to determine what is good. Only God has that authority to determine what is good. And we know from scripture that God is love, but we have to remember that God's love is not some warm and fuzzy feeling that we get or some infatuation that we feel uh, towards somebody else. God's love is rooted in his telos. And, and, and we see that in chapter, uh, the very first chapter of the Bible, in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31, it says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, and this is the sixth day. He says it's very good. I mean, how amazing is that, that he's created us in his image, and he says that, you know what? very, very good. And ultimately what happens is we see that Satan, this fallen angel who thought that he was going to have the authority, that he thought he was going to overthrow God, he comes and changes the words of God in front of Adam and Eve. And they did not know the scripture well enough. They didn't know the words of God well enough to recognize the lie that Satan was telling them. So Satan uses this tactic. He changes words here and there. He wants to cast doubt in a person's mind and their heart when it comes to the things of God. Thinking things so simple is like, he basically is, did God really say? Did God really say not to eat of that fruit? Did God really say, and we can apply that, I think, in our culture today, did God really say that it's okay for you to go and change your gender? Did God really say that it's wrong to do that? Did God really say? And this doubt creeps in, and Satan is ultimately a thief. He wants to rob and destroy. And I think that's what happens in our culture today throughout all cultures is that we see that Satan has cast this doubt of what the Word of God really says about human sexuality that God has created male and female and they each have a distinct role they are equal they're created in his image with different roles and God and Satan has cast doubt and has robbed humanity of the truth and we buy into these lies of what Satan says and he is basically waging war against us 
and on God. So my question is, how well do we know God's Word? Are we rooted in God's Word, in these scriptures, to know when a lie from the enemy, from the world, from the culture is coming? Are we rooted enough in this scripture? Are we rooted to know the truth opposed to the lies? In Psalm 32, it talks about how sin will absolutely destroy. Sin will destroy your life, will destroy my life. But the beauty of the gospel is that Jesus has conquered sin. He has conquered the grave. He has conquered Satan. He has come to this earth. He's lived a life among us. He lived the life that you and I should have lived. And he died the death that you and I deserve to make us righteous before a holy God. That's the beauty of the gospel. So it doesn't matter how far you've gone. If you've gone down this road of being lied to from Satan, from this world, to buy into what this culture is saying about gender identity, it's not too late. If you are hearing this video, watching it, it's not too late. You can repent of that and Jesus will take those sins and spread them as far as the east is from the west and he will cleanse you of that and he will restore you from those sins. That's the beauty of the gospel that he restores us. It's like seeing an old vehicle that's been rusted, to, you know, everything's broken on it. And you go to like one of these car shows and the, those cars are restored to their original beauty. Our original beauty is to, to make much of God, to bring God to the Lord. And that's what he restores us to when we follow the gospel and accept the gospel and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. So Derek Webb, do not too far go. Red Link, you're not too far gone. Joshua Harris, you are not too far gone. God loves you. He is there with you. He want, He's rooting for you. He's cheering you on. He wants you to turn from this culture, from your sin. Follow Him. Trust in Him. That's the gospel. That's the beauty of the gospel. No one is too far gone. No one is too far gone. And I'm just thankful that we have the scripture that Jesus loved us not to take our place. So if you have questions about that, drop them down in the comment section. I'd love to engage with you on what a relationship with Jesus looks like. Just be mindful of what the culture throws at us. There's a lot of lies. There's a lot of deceit. Satan wants to rob and, and destroy us. And he uses the same tactics of trying to cast doubt into God's word. So stand firm, stay strong, stay rooted.